In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern, taking a look at mostly warmer temperatures compared to what's normal for this time of year, but there will be some back and forth. That is going to be enough to create a lot of instability and likely more chances of thunderstorms for most of you in the central and eastern states. Outside of that, we do have an increase in tropical probabilities off the southeast coast, now up to a code orange risk it goes yellow orange and red so we're at the kind of like mid-tier orange risk and it's sitting at a 40 percent chance of development so almost a 50 50 shot there just off the southeast coast which is definitely a big story so we're going to be diving into all of these things today first off let's take a look at the past three days of temperatures and it's been pretty interesting we've seen mostly warmer than normal conditions out west and you guys have probably heard me say this a hundred times but this is called a positive PNA, and it usually encourages cooler air into the east. But this one's special. We can see that there has been quite a bit of warm air set up over the east as well here, especially the northeast as well as the southeast of Canada. And a lot of this cooler air has been forced to funnel into the south central states where we've seen a lot of cooler temperatures down there. And again, the south central states and some of the deeper south and southeast there. Let's take a look at what's upcoming though as far as temperatures and we can see cooler conditions for those similar areas across the southeast lasting a few days. What ends up happening is we do get these cooler times here in the west. So more of a negative PNA look and this does encourage a little bit more warmth to work its way in although there's still plenty of cold to go around. So it's really really back and forth very turbulent is what I usually call it and again that is going to increase the overall instability leading to more thunderstorms, more showers, and overall just more precipitation and activity in general. Monday the 7th looks very, very hot along the eastern seaboard, also along the west as well with this positive PNA, but we, again, look at this, have these cooler conditions set up over the central states. Looking towards Tuesday the 8th, the southeast is very warm, the west, but again, in between we have a lot of cooler air. Thursday the 10th, pretty similar, and really we don't change up too much from this even by the end of the pattern, the only change that we see is this negative PNA starting up here as we reach our way towards midway into July. And this does encourage a lot more warmth. Overall, this could be a heat wave if it lasts three days with over 90 degrees of temperatures. Obviously, some of these areas wouldn't hit that. Some of these areas would. So it just depends. But this does look like a bit of a heat dome set up over the central and eastern states. Looking towards some of our storminess here, Wednesday the second here today we see along the eastern seaboard there's some activity also for the south central states like new mexico texas oklahoma some activity as we work our way towards tomorrow thursday on july 3rd we see a lot of areas especially across your rockies and south central states seeing this again turbulent weather the potential for thunderstorms and showers just really really present throughout that region and then the immediate eastern seaboard of course we are watching this area for that potential tropical development which would be kind of flowing in this direction so would lead to potential coastal impacts here especially along the carolina coast we'll be watching that closely here is uh the fourth of july here friday and we see that a lot of our activity is shoved off the eastern seaboard and we mostly see drier conditions as you can see for the central states a lot of activity here throughout the plains upper midwest regions and even there for the northwest and rockies we are seeing continuous activity as far as thunderstorms and showers uh really really active out there and definitely going to perhaps interfere with firework displays the deep deep southeast might have some thunderstorms around as well but overall the eastern states do look quite nice for the fourth of july working our way towards saturday on the fifth we continue to watch for tropical development in this region we do see that the more middle of the nation is going to be the area to watch still for thunderstorm activity working away towards sunday on the sixth here we do have a bit of low pressure up there in southeastern canada a funnel boundary of sorts here stretching across much of the nation and again bringing thunderstorm chances with it but perhaps even severe weather if we see tropical development, it would be located somewhere in here, again, near the Carolina coast for Sunday on the 6th, for uh, how many days is that? Yeah, four days from now. Looking towards Monday the 7th, we see that this would be still around for the Delmarva, southward into eastern Virginia, eastern North Carolina area, according to this European model. We still get this frontal boundary of sorts across some of your plains, Midwest Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic Northeast there. 
plains here dealing with thunderstorm activity. Uh, Tuesday the 8th, slowing down a little bit as far as activity. We still watch for this north central area to deal with thunderstorms, showers, just lots and lots of activity up in there. Uh, Wednesday the 9th as well, we see this low up here that's probably what was or maybe still is that tropical system of sorts by Wednesday the 9th. We can see, again, the Midwest and Plains is still the area to watch for activity. If you're not picking up on the trend already, I've said that probably like five times during this video, that area looks to be very active here between the next seven days. Uh, Thursday the 10th, it does move more towards the southeast, though, where we see kind of a plethora of different systems and, and storms happening in here. Looking towards Friday on the 11th, Eastern Seaboard dealing with a lot of these storms around. And again, the Midwest and Plains uh, starting back up. Saturday the 12th, slowing down, but very similar to what we saw towards the beginning of the model run. Really the coast and then the north central areas seeing the most activity. Sunday, what can I really break down here? Every day looks the same to me. We're really stuck in a loop here. Monday the 14th, at least it moves a little bit more southeastward, but not by much. And again, with this continuous activity, we do see continuous chances of tropical development. By the midway point of the month, and this model's been suggesting this for uh, multiple days now, we see more instability in there, more potential for some low pressure to try to take off either off the southeast coast or here in the northeast regions of the Gulf. We'd be watching for that towards the midway point of the month and maybe even more times during July. It's a very, very hot spot for tropical activity during this time of year. Wednesday the 16th here, Eastern Seaboard, and really we continue that into Thursday the 17th as well here. Total precipitation, because of everything we looked at, the North Central and the Southeast are really the highlight areas for above average precipitation. And when we look at the anomalies, Central States, East Coast, a little drier in between as you can see, and a little drier towards the West, although this is very, very close to normal for the West. Really, really close. Looking towards the Storm Prediction Center outlooks, here's the day one categorical outlook. Uh, and as you can see, again, for Wednesday, July 2nd, today, very large light green area that is going to be your general thunderstorm risk area where we expect general thunderstorms, not severe weather though, but anything is possible. It's very, very tricky to forecast, so still heed every watch warning and advisory and pay attention out there because these storms can still be very dangerous. Uh, three darker green areas you might notice as well. That's going to be your level one marginal risk where we expect isolated severe weather to occur. And then for kind of central and north central Montana, we have that yellow area that's going to be your level two slight risk where we expect more scattered about activity as far as severe weather. Day two, which is going to be for Thursday on July 3rd, we do see that very large light green area once again. The three marginal risk areas and the two slight risk regions, including one there for southern New England parts of the mid-Atlantic as well. Uh, really interesting there. Day three for Friday on the 4th. Again, more centered around the central states and some of the Rockies. A little bit of a risk there in the southeast, but much less chances than what we've been dealing with for a while now in the northeast and here for the lower Midwest and even some of the deep south there. Looking towards the tropics, here's your seven-day graphical tropical weather outlook. And as you can see, we do have a 40% chance of tropical formation over the next seven days, still through the next 48 hours, we do see a 0% chance though. So you can imagine that this is for after the two day mark, but before the seven day mark. So between two, days two and seven, we do have a 40% chance of tropical formation there off the Southeast coast. Definitely gonna be interesting to monitor this one. And we will keep you guys up to date with this daily for the most part, as this would pose a threat to multiple states uh, with some potential for some weak tropical activity. Very interesting. With all that being said, be sure to subscribe. We upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.